In this 39th lecture, you are going to introduce the concept of spectral density and study some of the properties of spectral density. <coughs> I had already introduced the topic yesterday um, and the topic concerns the representation of random variables in the frequency domain. So far, our discussion has all been in the time domain. And as we had discussed last time, you cannot really take the Fourier transform of x of t if x of t is a random process, because the Fourier transformability condition that is absolute integrability or, or finite energy is not obeyed by a random time function. It extends from minus infinity to plus infinity and therefore, to be able to utilize Fourier transform, what we do is we take a truncated, a truncated version of the random variable. That is, we multiply x of t by a window function w of t, where the window function is such that it has a finite duration. For example, window function could be equal to 1 for let us say minus uh, capital T less than equal to small t less than equal to plus t. That is from minus t to plus t the window function exists otherwise it is 0. Which simply means that we are passing the random time function through a gate and this gate is u of t plus t minus u of t minus capital T. All right, And let us call this as the truncated version of the random function. Random <coughs> time function. <coughs> the subscript capital T stands for truncated as well as half length of the window. All right, Half length is capital T. And then x t of t can be Fourier transformed. We can write <coughs> capital x t of omega as the Fourier transform of x t of t. All right and therefore this is minus infinity to plus infinity the usual definition x t of t e to the minus j omega t dt this is the Fourier transform. Now <coughs> obviously it can also be written as minus t to plus t all right instead of x t of t we could write x of t within this limit x of t and x t of t are identical e to the minus j omega t. So, one way of saying that we can we can make a Fourier transform of the random time function is to say that instead of integrating over the complete range we integrate over a certain finite range and in that sense sometimes such an integral is also called finite Fourier transform. I did not wish to uh, emphasize on this because the initials are F F T and F F T stands for something else in the literature that is fast Fourier transform. This is a finite Fourier transform in the sense that the limits are not minus infinity to plus infinity it is minus T to capital T and therefore, the value of this shall not only depend on omega, but it shall also depend on capital T and this is what has been represented here. The subscript capital T represents half duration and it is indeed a function of omega. Now, if you recall <coughs> Percival's theorem of Fourier transform, then you know that the energy in the time domain that is <coughs> x t squared t dt minus infinity to plus infinity, all right, energy in the time domain where the integration it suffices to integrate from minus capital T to plus capital T because x t of t is 0 outside this range, but we shall keep the limits as minus infinity to plus infinity. You know that this would be equal to 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity capital x t omega mod square d omega that is the energy in the time domain <coughs> is equal to the energy in the frequency domain. All right what is the dimension of x t omega magnitude square? It is energy per 
per unit hertz energy per unit hertz d omega by 2 pi is hertz and therefore this is the energy and therefore this is the energy density function which we had called we had called earlier as what did you call it that was a term what me spectral density All right. we had called it spectral density now we shall be we shall be concerned not with x t omega squared but a, but a modification of this we shall define now in the context of random time functions we shall define what is known as power spectral density instead of energy spectral density this is energy spectral density now how do i convert to power i divide by time and the time duration of the signal is 1 by is 2t and therefore i divide by 2t both sides so this would be 4 pi t i divide by 2t all right <coughs> then what i do is i write this as 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity mod x t omega squared divided by 2 t <coughs> I bring 2 t inside d omega all right and this is 1 over 2 t integral minus infinity to infinity x t squared t dt. <coughs> now you notice that if capital T tends to infinity if capital T tends to infinity then what is this integral this is simply no this integral it is average of the square of x it is x well x squared no time average that is right if capital T tends to infinity the left hand side has the interpretation of time average <coughs> as it is it is the time average, it is not a time average as it is without capital T going to infinity. It is the time average of x t, x subscript capital T. Is that clear? Only when capital T tends to infinity, it will represent the time average of the entire random process. And in case the process is ergodic, then it shall also represent x squared bar if are good. Is that correct? But the main problem is capital T is finite. It is not infinite. And therefore, we cannot say anything about the right hand side. We cannot relate the right hand side to either the time average or the ensemble average unless capital T goes to infinity. Now, if capital T goes to infinity, then you know x t omega does not exist. And therefore, there is a difficulty. So, what we do is instead of allowing capital T to go to infinity now, we take the expectation of both sides. That is, we forget about these interpretations, forget about this and take expectation function. All right, Take the ensemble average of the left hand side and the right hand side. Then, what you get is the following. <coughs> you get 1 by 2 T and you know expectation and time integration can be interchanged. So, expectation of x t square t dt, this would be equal to 1 over 2 pi minus infinity to infinity x t omega mod square divided by 2 t e of this expectation of this multiplied by d omega. What we have done is, <coughs> without bothering about the value of capital T, we have taken the expectation. Now, the expected value, if the process is stationary, then the expected value of x t squared dt, what will this be, irrespective of the value of t? Even if we take just one sample in the complete random function, random time function, and average it over the ensemble, then what is this value? Isn't this precisely equal to x squared bar? Irrespective of t. Yes. All right. <clears throat> and then, and then we know that this function had existed between minus t and plus t. Instead of minus infinity to plus infinity, it exists only between minus t and plus t. So therefore, this integral then becomes independent of capital T. 
this integral tell me this will be x squared part all right so whether capital t goes to infinity or not it doesn't matter but let's put it to infinity let's put limit capital t to infinity because this is independent of capital t the left hand side is x squared bar and in the right hand side in the right this is a very clever way of going into fourier transform going into the frequency domain Sir, <coughs> because xt this function exists between minus infinity minus t and plus t and this is a constant the expectation is a constant x squared bar so integral dt from minus t to plus t is twice t twice t and twice t cancel you simply get x squared bar all right this is independent of capital t <coughs> expectation even if you take a single point x1 let's say and take the ensemble average it would be x squared bar and therefore if you take over a range it shall remain x squared bar all right so x squared bar therefore i get as 1 over 2 pi notice this carefully minus infinity to infinity now limit t tends to infinity because this function is a function of t <coughs> expected value of x t omega mod square divided by 2 t d omega now <coughs> it is reasonable to expect i can't I can't say it very confidently. If it does exist, and it is reasonable to expect that this quantity, this quantity will exist. It may or may not. There are random time functions in which even a finite interval, if you divide by 2t and, and allow t to go to infinity, it may or may not exist. If it does exist, and in most of the practical cases it does, there is a slight fuzziness or uncertainty in this statement, but if it does exist, then this gives a beautiful way of converting a time domain into a frequency domain. And with that end in view, this quantity is given the symbol S, capital S, X, subscript X, which means that it belongs to the random process X, S X of omega. All right this quantity is given notation and <coughs> the term that is used for it let me write it again 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity s x of omega d omega where s x of omega is the limit t tends to infinity expected value of x t omega mod square divided by 2 t that is the definition of S x of omega and S x of omega if you look at it carefully uh, the, <coughs> the, the unit of x t omega whole square is energy per hertz all right. So, if I divide by t it shall be power per unit hertz and therefore, this quant the expectation does not change the unit because small p the spectral length of the probability density function is dimensionless and therefore, this whole thing has the dimension of power per unit hertz and therefore, S x of omega is called the power density or to make it more specific that power is not being computed in the time domain you call this as a power spectral density or in the context of random time functions it may simply be called the spectral density all right. Whenever we mention spectral density in the context of discussions on random variables in random time functions, it shall mean power spectral density. And this is the relationship that allows one to analyze linear systems with, with random time functions as inputs. It, it allows us to evaluate exactly as the system function that is h of omega what was h of omega in linear time invariant deterministic signals it was integral h t it was the Fourier transform of h t the unit impulse response. Now, it is as if the function of h of omega is now taken over by s x of omega and s x of omega is not the Fourier transform, but the magnitude squared of the Fourier transform divided by 2 t and taken an expectation. This artifice allows us to use S x omega exactly the same way as H of omega in, ram, in deterministic 
in non-random signal cases. As you shall see later, as you shall see later, the output spectral density would be equal to the input spectral density multiplied by h omega magnitude squared. All right, as you shall see later. But uh, later is later. Let's reserve that <coughs> for the time being for later use. There are various other names, but I will introduce them one by one <coughs> whenever the occasion arises. But in the literature, SX of omega has various kinds of names. We will be we will be happy with the term spectral density. Let us look at some of the properties which should be obvious from the from the definition. Obviously, Sx of omega is it real or uh, complex? Can it be complex? Obviously not. Why not? Because it is a magnitude squared, all right. So, it must be real and capital T is a real quantity. What else can you say about? Yes? It is always positive. Anything else? It is an even function of omega because it is magnitude square. All right. S x omega is real, positive and even. All right. This is, uh, this is what characterizes S x omega. Now, <coughs> this power spectral density can be a rational function or can be irrational. If it is rational as in most of the cases it is, if it is rational then obviously to be able to write it in this form. If S x of omega is a rational function, we should be able to write it in this form S 0 omega to the let us say 2 m plus uh, some constant let us say uh, a what will be the next power? If it is if it is rational all powers of omega must be even and therefore, the next power is 2 m minus 2 and the subscript should be 2 m minus 2 plus etcetera plus a 2 omega squared plus a 0. This is what in general it shall be and in the denominator we shall have omega to the 2 n plus let us say b 2 n minus 2 omega to the 2 n minus 2 plus etcetera plus b 2 omega squared plus b 0. This will be the general form if S x of omega is a rational function. So, why can't both of uh, numerator and denominator have uh, odd powers? Then omega will can be cancelled. Then it will be cancelling. We are considering uh, these polynomials as being uh, primes with respect to each other, all right. We, we, con we do not consider that trivial case, all right. Now, <coughs> There should be a restriction between n and m. All right. If if the the process for which you have found out the spectral density, if x squared bar, that is the mean squared value, if it exists, that is, if it is finite, if x squared bar is finite, what does it? What restriction does it impose on n and m? Obviously, n must be. less than m not equal to equal to is not allowed why why is it so because x square bar is 1 over 2 pi integral sx omega d omega this is from minus infinity to plus infinity now if sx of omega is a constant then what what does x square bar become it becomes infinite i beg your pardon <coughs> n should be greater than m strictly it cannot be equal to m either all right and if it is if it is a rational function we can say if it is a rational function satisfying this constraint we can say something else about sx of omega that it is a continuous function of omega right it can never blow up because x squared bar is finite and therefore, it is a continuous function of omega. Except for one specific case, which is a hypothetical case, but nevertheless, it is a concept which has found popularity in the literature. That is the case in which m and n are equal or S x of omega. No, we do not we don't worry about m and n. S x of omega is a constant. There is a special case for the spectral density 
which is very popular in the literature and for reasons for very very uh, logical and well justified reasons we introduce the fantasy of a spectral density being equal to constant. Obviously, this cannot exist in practice because the mean squared value of the process shall then be infinite, but it is introduced as a as a means for simplifying analysis and any random time function which has a spectral density equal to a constant goes in the literature by the name of white noise, white noise. A white noise has a spectral density. I tell you this is only a fantasy, a hypothesis, it does not, cannot exist in, in nature, but whenever we um, analyze a, a, a system whose, whose inputs are random, the concept of white noise, hypothetical concept comes very handy and it is very uh, interesting to analyze in terms of white noise. We all, uh, sometimes we, we, spe we specialize, we specify the uh, system in terms of its white noise response. That is when fed with white noise, such and such is the spectral density. Then you know that the spectral density of the output must be proportional to the to magnitude of h of omega whole square. All right. So, white noise, anything else if the noise is band limited, that is it is not S0 over the complete band of frequencies, but over a finite band of frequencies, then it is called a colored noise instead of white. White is a mixture of all noise, all colors and therefore, if the noise, if the spectral density uh, is band limited or it diminishes with omega, then we say it is colored noise. But white noise concept is, a, is an extremely popular concept because it facilitates analysis of linear systems. <coughs> Suppose the original random process x of t had a DC component. Suppose it contains a DC component, let us say x 0. That is x of t may be x 0 plus n of t. It contains a DC component. Then, then what will be the spectral density corresponding to x 0? You recall, you recall that, well, you do not have to recall. X of t contains a DC component, which means that at omega equal to 0, at omega equal to 0, the value of the spectral, value of the spectrum or the power spectrum shall be X0 squared, all right. Suppose X t is X0 then what is its energy either in the frequency domain or in the time domain x0 square all right x x of t could be a voltage or current in a 1 ohm resistor or across a 1 ohm resistor then x0 squared is its energy now what does it mean it means that there exists a finite energy in zero bandwidth it is only concentrated at a single frequency omega and the 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 power the energy is x0 squared all right so, what is the power spectral density? The energy is x0 square, that is right and therefore, you, if there is a DC component, the corresponding spectral density must contain a delta omega component. Only at omega equal to 0, it shoots up, at all other values of omega, it dies. The same comment applies if you have a periodic component in the random time function. For example, if x of t, if x of t contains a periodic component, let us say a cosine omega t plus theta, where theta is a random variable, the usual random variable uniformly distributed from 0 to 2 pi, then again the same problem arises. This function has the energy S squared and this S squared is at a single frequency let us say omega naught at a single frequency plus omega naught and minus omega both of them and therefore, corresponding to this the spectral density once again should contain delta functions, but two of them one is delta omega minus omega 0 and the other would be delta omega plus omega 0. These are two special cases where spectral density is not a continuous function delta omega introduces a discontinuity. To make things more concrete, 
let us consider a random variable x of t which is equal to x 0 plus x 1 let us say cosine of omega t plus theta where p theta probability density of theta is 1 over 2 pi 0 less than equal to theta less than equal to 2 pi and it is 0 otherwise. Let us consider this random variable all right it is a deterministic random process theta is the random variable. Let us find out its spectral density all right. If you want to find out spectral density now the calculation would be a little involved I will I will explain I will skip most of the algebra I will explain the steps. The first thing you have to do is to find out x t of omega all right x t of omega obviously is minus infinity to plus infinity but we do not have to do that we have to integrate because the, we integrate from minus t to plus t x 0 plus x 1 cosine of omega t plus theta yes e to the power minus j omega t d omega d t d t all right if i do that well we use omega correct thank you this is a particular component all right now if i if i integrate this obviously i shall get three terms one corresponding to x0 one corresponds to x1 e to the power j omega 0 t plus theta and a third corresponding to e to the power minus j omega 0 t plus theta and um, if you clear up the trigonometry then what you get is twice x0 sin omega t divided by omega corresponding to the first term plus x1 then you get two terms e to the j theta sin of omega minus omega 0 t divided by omega minus omega 0 plus e to the power minus j theta sin of omega plus omega 0 t divided by omega plus omega 0 this is the final result. <coughs> what we have to find out now to find out the spectral density we have to find out the mod square of this mod square of x t omega. Now in the process in finding this what we have to do is to take the real part of this and take the imaginary part square the real part and add to the square of the imaginary part. You see that the real part of x t of omega shall have this term, this term and then x 1 cosine theta multiplied by this plus this is that okay and the imaginary part would be j x 1 sine theta multiplied by this minus minus this one has to be careful and then when you square it up when you square it up and add well what shall you get uh, once again I skip the trigonometry the magnitude squared would be first of all you shall have a square of this term all right so you will get 4 x naught squared sine of omega t divided by omega square plus corresponding to this you shall have this squared cosine squared theta plus this squared sin squared theta and therefore you shall have x1 squared <coughs> sin squared omega minus omega 0 t divided by omega minus omega 0 squared. You shall also have the square of the other term that is sin squared omega plus omega 0 t divided by omega plus omega 0 squared is that all you shall have we shall have a term containing cosine theta we will not have a term containing sine theta shall we shall we have a term containing sine theta yes or no why can not you say ok let us say this is 
a plus b e to the j theta plus c e to the minus j theta. What we are doing is a plus cosine theta b plus c plus j sin theta b minus c. When I am squaring this, I will get a twice cosine theta term. When I am squaring this, I get a sin square term which combines with cosine square to make it 1. So, we shall have 1 term containing cosine theta plus term containing I do not want to write this term because I shall get rid of it. How? I take now the expectation. I take the expectation when I take the expectation and divide by 2 t that is how I get the spectral density. When I take the expectation of this term containing cosine theta what is the expectation? 0, zero. because this is periodic with theta and we are integrating from 0 to 2 pi it is uniformly distributed and therefore all that shall remain is only these 3 terms. Therefore, S x of omega again I skip the algebra the trigonometry <coughs> S x of omega would be limit t tends to infinity do not forget that capital T has to go to infinity then uh, <coughs> we divide by 2 t that is 4 x naught squared sin squared omega t divided by omega squared 2 omega square t we have to divide by 2 t plus x 1 square divided by 2 t sin squared omega minus omega 0 t divided by omega minus omega 0 whole squared plus x 1 squared by 2 t sin squared have I made a mistake somewhere do not allow me to is that okay this is the final expression square bracket ended we want to now put this in a particular form we want to put this in a particular form and we want to take term by term you see it suffices to consider the first term because both the other terms are of the same form isn't that right here it is sin squared omega t here it is sin squared omega minus omega 0 t in the denominator there is a capital T, there is a capital T and there is omega squared, omega minus omega 0 squared. So, taking one term suffices. Let us consider the first term. <coughs> Let us consider this term limit T tends to infinity. I write it in a, in a specific form. I write this as 2 x 0 squared <coughs> t then sin omega t divide omega t whole square is the first term ok is the first term ok let us compare 4 and 2 so it becomes 2 I have taken 2 x 0 squared and then I have taken a t here and t squared here is that ok omega squared is also there all right so the first term is this and I have to make capital T go to infinity. I can write says 2 x 0 squared limit T tends to infinity T tends to infinity T sin of omega T by omega T whole squared. Let us now concentrate on this. What is its value if omega is not equal to 0? If omega is not equal to 0, then you see t divided by t squared, so 1 by t. So, when capital T goes to infinity, this 0. So, this goes to 0 if omega is not equal to 0. If omega is equal to 0, then what is its value? Goes to infinity. And therefore, a function which is 0 everywhere except at omega equal to 0, obviously, is a delta function. And therefore, I should be able to write this as some k times delta omega. Is that okay? This capital K has to be found out. Capital K has to be found out. Will it depend on capital T? No, because capital T goes to infinity. And how do I find this out? What I do is I integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity K 
capital T sine of omega t divided by omega t whole square with respect to what? Omega. omega. So, d omega and this should be equal to integral k delta omega. So, it simply should be equal to k. This integral is a standard one sin x by x whole square and the value is pi for all values of capital T. Well, capital T for all values of capital T it does not require limiting value. It is independent of capital T and therefore, k is pi which means that the sectoral density because if you call this expression the first term shall be simply pi times delta omega not not quite there is a 2 x 0 squared that you cannot forget and therefore, S x of omega shall be equal to twice x of squared pi delta omega and in a similar manner you can write the other two terms because the other two terms are exactly similar there is no difference therefore, second the factor 2 pi instead of 2 pi what shall we have? pi by 2 pi by 2 x 1 square delta omega minus omega 0 plus pi by 2 x 1 square delta omega plus omega 0 this will be the spectral density this is the purpose of separation this is the if there is a DC component or a periodic component then the spectral density cannot be a continuous function it shall contain impulse function delta functions Corresponding to DC, there is a function, there is a delta function at omega equal to 0. Corresponding to the frequency, the periodic component at frequency omega 0, there are two components in the spectral density. One is at omega minus omega 0, the other is at omega plus omega 0. Now, if this derivation is correct, if this derivation is correct, obviously we should get x squared bar. We had calculated x and x of t is a random process containing a DC plus a periodic component. What was x squared bar? x 0 squared? No. x squared bar that is the mean value, average value. It was x 1 squared divided by 2. We did it long back. The mean squared value taking p theta equal to 1 by 2 pi from 0 to 2 pi we had calculated the mean squared value and the mean squared value was this. Now, if this derivation is correct we should get the same expression by <coughs> by appealing to the formula that x squared bar is 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity s x omega d omega. Now, if I substitute 1 over 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity 2 x 0 squared pi delta omega plus pi by 2 x 1 squared delta omega minus omega 0 plus pi by 2 x 1 squared delta omega plus omega 0 d omega. What is it that I get? For the each integral will be unity. So, it would be x 0 squared plus x 1 square pi, pi times x 1 square I mean 2, two, two by, into 2 by 4. So, you get half, half. I mean, get which is precisely the same as the result that we derived earlier and this is a check on our calculation. Um, <coughs> I want to summarize by saying that by using a clever trick a simple artifice it is possible to make calculations in the frequency domain. What is our motivation? Why are we so uh, insistent on transferring calculations to the frequency domain? Because we want to calculate convolution. That is the response of a linear time invariant system to a random input. And convolution is no longer simple multiplication. You cannot do that because the random time function itself does not have a Fourier transform. As in the non-random signal case, it was the, the the spectrum of the output or the Fourier transform of the output was Fourier transform of the input multiplied by the Fourier transform of the impulse response of the system. Well, it is not quite this. 
what shall be available here is with regard to the power spectral density and next time we will see how the power spectral density of the input transforms the output with a multiplication of h of omega whole squared. What can you what can you call now h of omega whole squared? It is no longer it is a system function h of omega is a system function, but it is not a system function which comes into effect. You see exactly like in in a non random signal case uh, in a non random signal case x of omega times h of omega is equal to y of omega. Well, it is true that y of omega magnitude squared equal to x of omega magnitude squared multiplied by h of omega magnitude squared, but it is not this function from which it comes. It comes from a consideration of the spectral density that is S x of omega. You will see that S y of omega. You cannot say capital Y of omega because Y of n is not Fourier transformable. Y of t is not Fourier transformable. You will see that this is equal to H of omega magnitude squared multiplied by S x of omega power spectral density. What name can you give to this function? <laughs> Let it be somewhat more uh, reflective of the Impulse function. Response Impulse system, that is too big. Something else. It is called as the power transfer function. Power transfer function. It should strictly be called spectral density transfer function because the, this is equal to S y omega divided by S x omega. All right. It should strictly be called spectral density transfer function, but it goes in the literature in the name of power transfer function. And this is a good point to stop today. We will continue this discussion next time. <coughs> power transfer function.